Hello and welcome to a highly restricted How I Paint Things. The following material has been approved for viewing by anyone of level 2 clearance or higher. If you possess only level 1 clearance, please remain where you are and await visitation from an MTF operative. Now the MTF, or Mobile Task Forces, of the Foundation are responsible for going out into the wild and taking care of any anomalous materials which either escape the Foundation's care or need to be contained in the first place. These guys, they deal with the weirdest threats that are out there. Think the X-Files on a really bad day. In particular, I'm enjoying painting this fella because I wanted to tackle urban camo, and there is a really cool piece of artwork which I will link to in the description, which inspired most of what I'm going to do here today. So as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now assuming you have clearance to view this file, let's begin. Now it's worth pointing out this fella is assembled using parts from the Digital Forge. Uh, he is all 3D printed, uh, but there are some very close alternatives that you can use from the Anvil range. Um, it is packed with modern military style gear, so you're not going to miss out if you don't have a printer, and each of these will eventually have a resin release anyway. So I'm using the arms, torso, and weapon from the hazmat containment team. The head, this is from the post-apocalypse pack, and the legs are from the recon drop troop pack. Um, like I said, it doesn't actually matter which sort of parts you're using. Um, I've gone for these because I like the little bit of high-tech body armor that the hazmat stuff is wearing. But whatever you're going to use is fine. So let's go ahead and prime this fella and get started with the painting. So after priming, this is what we'll have, and I've used the Army Painter's Matte Black. But it does not matter which primer you use, black is black is black, it's fine. <laughs> We're just using it to key onto with our other colors. Now I'm going to start off, I'm using here Black Grey from Vallejo, and I'm going to paint the whole dude in with this color, one quick coat over the top. Now the reason being behind this is we'll have something to do with the black. Uh, if you are trying to shade or highlight sort of flat black that hasn't had anything done to it, it will be quite sharp. Whereas if we start from a very dark gray like this, we have something that we can do. Now I will list uh, alternatives from Citadel in the description as well, because I know some of you do prefer being able to use those, uh, but they will not give you exactly the same result, but pretty close. Particularly this, if you can see the difference between uh, Corvus Black and Eschen Grey, then you'll appreciate some of what's coming here. Now after one quick coat of that, we've got a very dark grey, which gives us something we can do to simulate depth in black. Now I've got here a little bit of long beard grey, one of the dry paints, and I've worked it off into one of my little friends, my small friends, and I'm going to lightly dry brush with this makeup brush against the edge of some of the areas of the armour. So particularly being careful around his helmet here. And you'll see after a few passes, we build up that nice sharp edge. Don't worry if you hit his clothing. And if you go overboard, you know, you end up putting too much of this on, don't worry because, well, you've not really done anything else yet. It's super easy to just go back with that black gray and tidy up, smooth out any of these areas. Now you'll see I haven't been terribly careful with how that's been applied, but that's going to work just fine. There is a little bit of ghosting and some chalkiness to it now, but we're going to shade over the top of that and do plenty more. So I don't think I need to go back and fix anything up from that. That's going to work fine. What we'll move on to now is to make a decision on how we're going to paint the camo. And for this, I'm going to show you one method. And again, different colors will be listed in the description if you want to stick to Citadel. Now field blue does look much darker once it's dried, so don't worry if these two pots, you know, I look like I've gone mad. I'm going to use field blue, uh, but you could stick to the fang. Ultimately, I think the decision rests on whether or not you want a more realistic looking color scheme, and that's what we're going to go for. So I've got just a little bit of water in my paint here, and you'll see field blue covers wonderfully. We're going to go over all of his uniform with this to start with. Now that field blue covers wonderfully. It's a really great color. And you'll see it's this nice off gray blue. Um, I thoroughly recommend sometime try painting a Space Wolf with this. I think you'll really like the results. 
Now we're going to move on and start laying down some of the camo pattern. And for this, I'm going to show you how we'll draw some rectangles, basically. But we'll put this fella aside for a second and we'll get out the spray stick. So uh, if ever you're painting, you know, large numbers of infantry in one go, I tend to lay them out with a little blue tack on my spray stick. But because it's been so thoroughly primed, it's going to work for this demonstration. So talking about painting rectangles, how we'll start to lay down the camo is to draw little dark lines one way and slowly just bulk them out. Don't worry if you don't have a perfect rectangular edge. Then I'm going to move my stick. So if you've got a miniature in your hand, you're going to move the miniature instead. And just paint a little off-centered sort of T-shape. Then the next one, you might instead paint a slightly broader triangle. Well, let's just call it a square. <laughs> oh, you can tell my geometry lessons were interesting as a kid. But by laying out these fairly geometric patterns and just moving the miniature in your hand as you decide how you want to mix them up, you'll get a much more natural, or rather unnatural looking, camo pattern. So let's spin our miniature around and we'll start off, I have Administratum Grey. Now this is going to look so bright going on, it's going to look awful, but as always, keep the faith. I'm going to pick uh, this section here on his leg and I'm just going to paint a blobby line which will bulk out slowly into a rectangle and then I'm going to turn them and I'm going to go this way with a slightly shorter stubby edge. Now I thoroughly recommend have a look at the there is a an experimental urban camouflage pattern used by the US Marine Corps in the 90s. It looks terrible like it's absolutely ugly and it did not work at all it failed all its trials uh, but it is extremely useful as a way of looking at how to lay down some of these blobs and shapes. So take a look at that because you'll find it interesting, I think. Now I realize only now after quite poorly trying to explain the pattern, but think of Tetra shapes. So if I turn them around slowly, you'll see that I've used some of the, the squiggly shapes and reverse squigglies and what have you. And if you end up with any areas that have too much of this lighter color in there, we're going to fix that up now. Now I'm going to another Vallejo color. This is German gray. Now this is very close to Corvus black, but this has a tiny wee touch of blue to it. So it's going to be quite useful in that respect. What I'm going to do now is start blocking in some other areas, following a fairly similar sort of pattern to the uh, to the white stuff. I do want them to overlap ever so slightly, but I'm going to use less of this German gray than I did the white. I don't want it to really overpower the blue. Now it takes a bit of patience, but at this point you'll have your camo pattern. Now I do recommend have a bit of a play around with this because it's actually, it's time consuming. It isn't a quick way of doing things, especially compared to things like DPM or Marpat, you just splatter that on. But with these sharp square shapes, it does normally require a little bit of cleanup. So don't be afraid to go back to your base colors if you want to square off the edges of these details. Now making a surprise return appearance is my little friend, my small friend, with some long beard gray. And we are going to very lightly dry brush along some of the areas of detail on the trousers uh, and the sleeves as well. Reason being is there's quite a lot of depth and detail in this figure that we're going to miss if we leave it flat. But we don't want to have to individually highlight all of these squares. <laughs> and long beard gray will work as a highlight color for pretty much all of this. So don't worry if it seems like you're going to end up going a little overboard because visible folds are still going to look better than not. So take your time and remember with a dry brush, it's always easier to come back and add more if you need to. That dry brush is going to reintroduce a bit of depth and that's going to look really cool when we come back and shade the miniature. Now, before we get to shading, I want to go on and I'm going to paint in his goggles because if I make any mistakes here, I can correct them by painting in the rest of the face mask. So I'm actually going back to Administratum Grey again and I've swapped down to a smaller brush here. 
What we'll do is apply a couple of coats of this into the goggles. Now you'll need to be careful with this when you come near the top of the helmet, but if you do make any mistakes, uh, try and draw your brush towards the mask because the mask will be the easier one to fix. Now I did end up having to come back and tidy up a little bit of that face mask. We can highlight that again later if I really want to. I've got now a contrast color. This is Griffhound Orange, and this going over gray is going to give us a really deep, kind of grimy orange. It's not going to look totally sci-fi, which I'm quite keen on. Okay, smaller brush. I really need to be able to control where this goes. So we're going to apply this over the gray and just guide it towards the bottom of the goggles. And then we'll leave that to dry for a few minutes. Now you'll see we get this cool almost red, and I really like how that looks, eh? Very simple to achieve. What I'm going to do now, I have Fire Dragon Bright. We're going to go quite sharp for this highlight. And what I'm going to do is I've thinned it out just a little bit so that it's going to flow off my brush. And you'll see I haven't got much here at all. I'm going to flip them upside down, because from this angle, you'll find it much easier. We're just going to get in and do a little bit on the bottom of his goggles. And as always, whispering while you do this will help. Now to brighten them up and add just a little bit of visual interest, we're going to put some silver details on them. Now I don't want to go full sci-fi, so I'm going to be quite sparing with this. But using a little lead belcher, I'm going to paint in the barrel of his weapon. That'll look cool. Uh, just a little bit on his mask here. And I'll pick a couple of other minor details like this cabling, let's cover that over in a metal cable. Yeah, let's come back and have a look at that in a second. I haven't really done very much silver at all, just a little bit there to make some of those details stand out a bit. What I'm going to do finally, before we go to shading, is just paint in his gloves. I have here staggered on scale green, and I really like this because it's going to give them kind of a rubberized, uh, you know, treated finish but it's going to stick to the palette that we've established for all the rest of his gear so far. With all of those colors dry, we can finally shade him. And for this, I've actually mixed up on my palette here two parts non-oil to one part Lamian medium. There's nothing saying you couldn't just use straight non-oil. Um, I want just a little bit of softener to this because I don't want it to overpower the uniform. But I'm going to apply this, let's spin him around, over the entire miniature. And when it comes to areas like Honor's uniform, if it pulls in a big way, I'm just going to move it around quickly with my brush while it is still wet. So we're going to go over the entire figure. So all of his equipment, his face and what have you, uh, try to dodge the uh, goggles that we've painted. Uh, but everything else, give it a quick coat of this. Make sure that you are working it into your recesses. And then we'll give this about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. Now, once at last that shade has dried, winner. You know, we could just varnish them up, put them on the table like this. But there are just a couple of tiny details remaining that I do want to touch up. Now, the first of these we're going to go back to is my little dry brush. And I've got here some basalt gray from Vallejo. And I'm using this because this has a nice, very faint blue touch to it. So as I dry brush over the weapon, we're not going to sort of overpower that but we will pick up some of the edges of detail and make it look a little bit more interesting. And finally, in the realm of just being fussy for the sake of it, I have here Thunderhawk Blue, and I am going to highlight just the backs of his knuckles to make his gloves stand out a little bit more. Now, interestingly enough, this would also make a really good base color for the camo. Now, once I've finished this off, what I'm going to do is let that dry. I'll apply a matte varnish. I'm going to spray on uh, Vallejo's mat for this, and then I'm going to go ahead and give him a base, and we'll see what he looks like once our MTF operative is all finished. And there at last, our MTF operative is complete, and he's ready to go out and recapture or contain any anomalous materials or escapees, or have a stern discussion with any D-class personnel accessing materials that they're not supposed to, and whether you're painting Space Marine Scouts, a SWAT team, or a Stargrave crew, I think there's something that you might find useful in here. 
In particular, you might even swap to using a pure black and white for the camo pattern, depending on how sharp you want it to turn out. But I think this works pretty well for close to reality, uh, but without sort of pushing the boat out too far and making it far too high contrast. It's really a matter of personal taste there. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and remember, today is not your first day. Take your nestics.